Well, good morning, and I guess I should say good afternoon to those of you across the pond uh, that are watching over in the UK and Europe and stuff. I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in and watching uh, this afternoon and this morning. I'm going to be talking to you guys about, um, basically about treats. Um, and we're going to be talking about, I'm going to be covering three topics on treats. Uh, the first one that we're going to talk about is how to train a dog that is not motivated by them. The second one we'll talk about is how and when to use treats in training. And then the last one will be how to phase out treats in training. So uh, we'll start with how to train a dog that is not motivated by treats. Every once in a while, actually let me introduce myself first, sorry about that. My name is Aaron Jones. I'm uh, the owner and certified dog trainer for AJ's Wagon Train, located just outside of Houston, Texas, here in the good old USA. Um, I've been training for about eight years. I've owned my company for a little over a year now. I was a uh, certified, or I'm sorry, I was a veterinary technician for 12 years before I started training dogs. Uh, so I've got a good history and a love for the canines. So let's jump on into how to train a dog that isn't motivated by treats. Um, we run into this every once in a while in the dog training world that dogs just don't want to use treats. Um, one of the first actual suggestions that I give my clients when they say that their dog isn't treat motivated is I ask them to actually, if they haven't yet, to take out and buy a variety of treats, not just one kind, different flavors, different sizes, um, and put them kind of on a platter, on a plate, spread them out, see if they go for anything and if they like them, and then put that one on the side that they like and get some other ones. Also, if they're just not into dog treats, I also give them the options of regular like cheese, um, like cheese, hot dogs, bologna, uh, sliced chicken, or actually taking the uh, actual raw chicken and boiling a chicken um, with nothing in it, just water, and boiling it and uh, shredding it up. A lot of dogs really go for that. So um, if you guys happen to have a dog that's not treat motivated and you've tried all kinds of treats, try actually boiling some chicken and seeing if they like that. Um, so most dogs are willing to do anything for treats. Um, they're motivated behaviors and they uh, go on the move. Without proper motivation, training a dog in obedience can feel impossible. You need something to grab their attention and get them listening. So when treats don't do the trick, it's time to switch tactics. And the good news is treats aren't the only tool you can use when it comes to training. Try the tips and tame your training resistant dog. So one of the things that you can do is you can up the ante. Think of a dog treat as currency. You're basically paying your dog to perform a certain behavior and some dogs refuse to work for minimum wage. A generic brand dog treat may not be doing it for your dog. So like I said, fresh off the grill chicken, cheese, uh, might be the one to uh, curb that appetite. Also, remove distractions. Distractions are a constant obstacle in training. You want your dog to focus on whatever the lesson you're trying to teach them is. Let it be objects, sounds, smells, or there's often way more interesting thing that commands your coaxing. But sometimes the dog simply decides to staring down at a cat across the street or, you know, it's just not worth the treat. They want to look at that cat or they want to look at that bird flying in the air. So if you're trying to train a dog that's new to your home, maybe try going into a small area, small surroundings and trying that to see if there is something that will help them out. Also, you can use play as a reward if your dog is not treat motivated. Um, if they refuse treats, don't lose hope. Like I said, uh, use, you know, with the positive reinforcement, Interactive play with them, they will actually love most pups. Uh, get their favorite toy, whether it be a tug toy, squeaky toy, toss toy, anything like that. And last but not least, well, not last but not least, is my go to also, whether you're using treats or not, always praise, pet, and love your dog when you're training. So sometimes dogs just love regular praise and being petted. Um, that also always, the reason why I say I always use that too, is it's going to help strengthen the bond with your dog, no matter what, especially if you're training a puppy. You've got to have that bond. And if you've just got them, you've got to initiate that bond. Um, so practice with, you know, with the praise and, you know, with your pets and use the little that will work. 
um, when training your dogs that are motivated by treats. Now we're gonna jump into how and when to use treats as a reward. Believe it or not, this is a question that I get all the time for owners. Um, you know, whatever treats work for your dog, I tell them that. Um, but firstly, some people will tell me that treats, and you know, is bribing a dog. I say this utter rubbish. Nobody, like I said, works for nothing. So we always get something when we're doing a good job. So why should your dog be different? If they get a lovely treat for doing something you like, then they'll do that behavior, perform that action over and over again to try to get that treat again. Secondly, what I try, you know, what I tell them is whenever your dog is doing something that you like, but you also need to control the amount of treats your dog gets so we can maintain the value, what you do is you make it really easy. Don't give a food treat every time, but definitely praise them verbally, like I said, and pet them. If your dog does something on the third time of asking, then give them a, you know, three treats if they're doing really, really well. This gives the dog the understanding that there may or may not be treats the next time when they do something you like. If you treat them every time, then you'll devalue the treat very quickly. And thirdly, the type of treat should reflect the task in hand. If you're asking for a sit, don't give them a T-bone steak, give them a basic biscuit. You know, if you're asking for a strong recall and they're not good at a recall or the come command, that's when you break out the good stuff. Um, you know, like I said, people get paid for overtime. So in the same way, give your dog more if you're doing more difficult tasks. And treats are a great way to introduce new cues and behaviors for your dog. But we also need to phase them out over time. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So to ensure that the treats stay valuable and we don't get chubby dogs, Treats don't have to be food, once again. They could be toys, praise. Most importantly, it has to be something that your dog really wants. So like I said, once again, your dog's not motivated, maybe that tug toy is the one to go to. Or even when you are you know, doing something with a difficult task, if they like that toy more, then you'll probably wanna use that as a high value instead of a treat when they do something really, really good. Um, and you know, once again, like I said, Giving them a treat and having them perform the task is like playing the lottery. You pay, you play for the chance that it's going to pay off and you may win. You don't always win, but you still play. So let's celebrate the you know ten dollars that we win, so to speak, for the dog, you know, and spend that each week playing. So your dog's going to want to play that game over and over again. So keep them intrigued in what you're going to be doing with that task in hand. And once again. Once they start getting the mastery down of those of those cues and those behaviors, you'll slow down on your treat giving. So now we're going to jump into how to phase out treats and training. Um, I get this asked a lot by my clients also. Am I going to have to give them treats forever? Is this something that I'm really going to have to do? And also I saw a lot of comments for you trainers out there wondering how this is pretty interesting and what to, well, you know what to do. So. One of the ultimate goals of training is for your dog to be able to trust that they are for you to trust your dog that they'll do something that you ask without needing a food reward treat every time. So what do, what dog owner wants to rock around with a pocket full of turkey everywhere they go every day for the rest of their life? Certainly not realistic. Dog treats are important and useful when first introducing a new behavior when you're training your dog or an intellectual part of positive reinforcement. We wouldn't show up to work every day if we didn't get a paycheck. You know, like I said, this is the paycheck. They deserve to get paid for their work, but unfortunately, one of the main reasons dogs opt out for, you know, for punishment-based or balance-based dog training, it's a myth. That if they start with treats to train their puppy, that they will always have to use food treats to get that behavior going again. It's not true. You can actually phase that out. And one of the ways that you can actually phase out dog treats, that's a really good one, is what I call real life rewards. You wanna incorporate real life rewards and you wanna start doing that from the very beginning. Even when you are using treats, incorporate real life rewards. And I'll give you some examples of what real life rewards are. I'll explain it to you a little bit too. Real life rewards are something that you run into every day or something that more specifically that the dog wants, sees, or loves. Um, they find life rewarding. 
So, you know, treats are incredible, you know, motivators for puppies, but there's times when the treats aren't working, and you can also use the real life rewards. One of the examples of a real life reward is if your dog wants to go outside and you ask them for a sit at the door. Well, they give you the sit, so their reward, the real life reward, would be opening the door for them so they could go out. So that would be their reward, a real life reward. You're going, hey, I did something I asked for, but I'm also doing something for you that you asked for, and they're getting that as a reward. Another example is if your puppy is seeking out for attention, you can reward them by keeping all four paws on the floor without jumping by giving them praise, petting, and affection and attention. So you're giving them what they want and something that they love. While out on a walk, you can reward your dog for keeping a loose leash by allowing them a moment to go sniff the higher fire hydrant and explore. So you know that they love to explore, dogs love to do it, but if they're giving you something, you gotta give something. You, you know, it's, it's a 50-50 kind of thing. You, you gotta give and you gotta get. Um, if your dog comes when, when you call them, grab a toy, play a quick game with them. Uh, that'll always be something that they'll love, you know, once again. Um, as professional dog trainers, we're always thinking of what a dog wants and what motivates them. Um, so. I encourage you guys, all of you out there, even the trainers, to, you know, to look at the other things besides training so that way you can phase out, you know, the tre I'm sorry, with the treats so that way you can start phasing out the treats and only use them every once in a while, not all the time. And another reason why I like to start phasing out treats and training all the time once again is because when you're giving them the treats and you have the treats in your pocket or you have the treats in your bag, when you reach for that treat, they're going to be looking at that. So they're going to get hooked on looking at your hand, looking at that bag, and it's going to help also to start distracting them. So if you start working that way, they're not always going to look for that. They're going to be looking around to see what you're going to give them because it's not always going to be a treat. So it's another way to help grab their attention and not keep them, you know, bullseye focused on your hand or the treat bag. Um, and one of the other things I like to encourage you about treats kind of off the topic, but it's something that you know, will help your dog not be distracted and always looking at your hand or the pocket or the treat bag is give your keyword of the correct, I'm sorry, give your marker word, which you, a marker word is saying yes, good, perfect, excellent. You're letting your dog know that they performed the task, the behavior, or the cue that you asked them to correctly. Then you can reach for your pocket or your treat and hand it to them. So that way they're gonna get the sense of understanding that the marker word it's what they're looking for, not the treat. So if you give the marker word, and it takes three, four, five seconds for you guys to read it, reach in your treat bag or your pocket to give them a treat, that's absolutely fine because they've heard that marker word. Also, I encourage you guys not to just keep the treats in your hand because once again, that's really going to keep them looking at your hand instead of focusing on the tasks that you're asking them. So... We'll talk about also, we'll talk about now the schedules of reinforcement and how, how often to reward your dog. With continuous reinforcement, and we're going to get a little technical here about how to properly phase out training and treats. When we first begin teaching a new behavior, most positive reinforcement dog trainers use a schedule of continuous reinforcement during training sessions, meaning every correct response is rewarded, usually with the food treat. If you're clicker training your dog, you start by clicking for every correct response, and click is always followed by a food treat. So if your dog sits, you click and you treat. The clicker is faded out as your dog becomes fluent with each behavior, which sets up for phasing out treats as well. So you could do your clicker as often, but then I encourage you to start breaking down and not giving the treats as often as you're breaking down the click. So maybe for every two or three clicks you give, you'll give a treat. For every four or five, after maybe four days, five days, you'll give a treat. Then after another two or three days, after six or seven, you'll give a treat. Um, then you also have differential reinforcement. You want your dog to switch to a differential reinforcement schedule as soon as possible. For your, pup, you know, for your puppy to avoid being a, a vending machine, a food vending machine. And a differential reinforcement schedule means that your dog is graded on the quality of the response and is given a corresponding reward to reflect. So, 
take your treats, maybe break a few of them up into smaller pieces, or start going to what is called a lower value treat. So if they're not performing the task at hand as often, but they're giving it to you, they get a smaller amount of treat or they get a lesser value treat. You wanna use your higher value treats, which are the ones that they really, really, really like that they go to, as when they do something exceptionally well, something that you've been trying to work on forever, or also when you are first re when you are first introducing a cue or a behavior that you want them to perform. So start breaking down those treats, giving them smaller, or if they're not performing the treat, per, the, the, I'm sorry, if they're not performing the cue or the behavior prefer, perfect, per, perfectly, sorry, my speech is off, if they're not doing it perfectly, then maybe you wanna skip giving them a treat that time until they do it a little bit better. So it's a way to encourage them for that. And vari variable intermittent schedules of reinforcement. So this is the holy grail here. The variable schedule of reinforcement is the ultimate goal for using treats when training your dog. The variable schedule means that treats are randomly given for high quality performance of cues. Your dog doesn't know when they might get a yummy treat for a sit, so they keep offering it to you in hopes that they're getting paid, that they're getting that treat. It builds up motivation in your dog and it becomes their mindset as well. Well, if I didn't get a treat for this sit, let's try it again and maybe I'll get it next time. Oh, I didn't get it this time? Okay, well maybe I'll try it again and get it this time. <gasps> There's the cheese. All right, let's do it again. I got it. I got that treat, so I'm going to keep doing it. So once again, think about that slot machine. You know, it's a variable schedule of reinforcement with, you know, with us, with the slot machine. We insert a coin. We don't get paid every time. You know, if we did, the casinos would go broke. But, you know, we always say, let's try it again. Another coin. Let's try it again. Another coin. Oh, we got something. Yeah. So I'm going to do it again. Um, you know, and they have what's called, you know, the algorithm. So we kind of set up an algorithm for our dogs. Um, your dog will not rely on food as a reward if they continue, you know, if you continue offering the high quality treats. So like I said, you know, break it down and then, you know, they'll get used to that. And lastly, we'll talk about when should you start phasing out food rewards. Um, we've talked about how to phase them out. Now we'll talk about when you should phase them out. Um, you need to build a strong foundation for training cues before expecting your dog to be able to perform without food treats. So your dog should have a consistent response to the cue in different environments in your home, the group class is outside of the yard, um, at Starbucks with people walking around, things like that. Um, your dog should have a re reliable response to the cue with variable distractions, other dogs around, people around playing, um, the dogs barking, cats, traffic moving by, all that kind of noise. Um, so this means you have to practice those behaviors and those cues in different environments before you start thinking about phasing out those treats. Um, and once again, using the variable schedule of reinforcement also while doing that. So once they start perfecting that in traffic, I mean, you know, in distraction areas, you'll start phasing that also. But most importantly, remember that training should always be fun and rewarding for both you and your dog. So while the goal is to phase out to use the food treats, there's nothing wrong with paying your dog for a job well done. So incorporate those real life reinforcement rewards as long as well as using those treats and just start using that. Praise and petting, the toys, there's so many different variables you have out there that you can use. Um, so like I said, I encourage you to start using them at the very beginning so that way you have the options and it'll be much more easier to phase out those treats in training. And always, always, always do not force your dog to perform a behavior. Um, always work at your dog's pace, not your pace. Dogs do not speak human language. They don't understand what we're saying. We have to, you know, teach them what we want them to do. They'll learn those words. They'll learn those hand cues. So do not rush into it. So if your dog's having trouble, even if you are phasing out the treats, maybe you need to back up a little bit and go back to giving more treats if your dog's not performing it like we always say, we want our dog to perform the behavior or the cue that we're asking them to do 90% of the time effectively right on the spot before we start moving up and upping the ante or the distractions with your dog.
So the same thing as phasing out treats. If they're not hitting it 90% of the time with, you know, phasing out the treats, then let's back up a little bit. Um, my session was really short. I thought I was going to go a little bit longer. Um, I probably could have, you know, typed up a few more things, but um, we did get through it. If you guys have any questions or um, comments, please let me know. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, once again, my name's Aaron Jones. I am the owner and certified dog trainer of AJ's Wagon Train. So you can reach me both on um, Facebook under both those names, AJ's Wagon Train, or with my name, Aaron Jones. Um, I appreciate you guys for watching. I um, want to thank you guys for giving me uh, the opportunity to be here at the Virtual Dog Conference for March of 2021. I look forward to doing it with you guys again. Also, thank you to all the other speakers that have uh, jumped in and pitched in to give your free time and to do this absolutely free to help educate dog owners and also the trainers out there. We need more things like this out there. Um, us trainers need to get together and start helping each other out um, and helping educate people uh, for safe practices, um, everything safe, and to make sure that your dog lives a happy life with you and you live a happy life with your dog. Um, thank you guys and God bless.